So we've been talking about these systems of equations. And we did the graphing for a couple days, and we've talked a lot about substitution last class. I'm going to do one more example of that, and then we're going to move on to other methods and then some applications. So for substitution, I want to do something like this. 2x plus 5y equals 9, and 3x minus y equals 11. So now looking at this, first thing we have to do is we have to figure out to solve by substitution. We have to figure out which variable we can solve for. Because we have to have one of those equations in the form of either y equals or x equals. And we have a couple of possibilities. Either this top equation, we could solve for x, because that would just be dividing by 2. So the worst that would do is give us a decimal of 0.5. Or in this bottom equation, we could solve for y, because there would just be dividing by a negative 1, and that won't give us any decimal at all. So let's do that one. Let's solve that one for y. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make that, it's a negative y, I'm going to make it a negative 1y. Because when I do that, it's a little clearer what we have to do to solve it. So now we have to get that y by itself. y has been multiplied by negative 1, and 3x has been added to it. So what's the first thing we have to do to try to get y by itself? Subtract the 3x. Very good. So that's going to make that 3x go away. We'll subtract 3x on the other side. So we've got negative 1y left on the left side. 11 minus 3x, of course, is just 11 minus 3x. The next step would be to do what? Divide by negative 1. That cancels out the negative 1. We do it here. That's why I put that 1 in there, so we remember that we had to divide by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative. So y equals 11 divided by negative 1 is negative 11. And negative 3x divided by negative 1? Positive 3x. So what this gives us is an equation that is the net form of y equals. So that came from this second equation. So we have to make sure, we have to make sure that we put it back into the other equation. If I tried to put it back into the same one, it's just going to end up canceling out. We're going to end up getting 0 equals 0, and that's not going to be very useful. So we go back up to that first equation. So instead of... 2x plus 5y, it's 2x plus 5, we replace the y with negative 11 plus 3x equals 9. So now we have to solve this equation. We see the parentheses here. So first thing we have to do is multiply through that parentheses by the 5. So the 2x won't change. 5 times negative 11 gives us negative 55. 5 times 3x gives us positive 15x. Really good. Equals 9. So now we have 2x and 15x. They're both on the same side of the equal sign, on the same side of the equation. So we can put them together to make how much? 17x. I'm sure his hair is nice and soft, guys, but let's keep our hands to ourselves back there. So we still have the negative 55 here equals 9. So now we have to solve this. What's our first step to solve it? Add 55. 17x equals 64. 
And then we are going to divide by 17. Now I set these up so I knew that they would not come out to be whole numbers. 64 over 17, or 64 divided by 17, I'm going to make it a fraction by making it 64 over 17. And then I'm going to have to reduce it. 17 goes into 64 three times. 17 times 3 would be 51. So that's 13 left over. So that is 3 and 13 seventeenths. So x is equal to 3 and 13 seventeenths. So one of the reasons we do these algebraic methods, this substitution is more work than graphing, but one of the reasons we do it is a fraction like 3 and 13 seventeenths would be just about impossible to get off a graph. So now I'm going to put that back in to one of my equations to find y. And I have this one here that I've already rearranged and solved for y equals. So it'll be easy to put that equation back in there for y. So I'm going to rewrite this. y equals negative 11 plus 3. And instead of x, I'm going to put in 3 and 13 seventeenths. So y equals the negative 11. 3 times 3 and 13 seventeenths. So that's going to be 3 over 1. The 3 and 13 seventeenths, I'm going to turn back into 64 seventeenths. So I'm going to multiply those. 3 and 13, or 3 over 1 times 64 over 17. It's 192 over 17. So y equals a negative 11 plus 192 over 17. Now we need to break this back down into a mixed number. So 17 going into 192. Well, it goes into 19 once. That's 17 with 2 left over. Bring down the 2. 17 goes into 22 one more time. That's 17 with 5 left over. So that is 11 and 5 seventeenths. So to finish that off, this is 11 and 5 seventeenths here. Y equals a negative 11 plus 11 and 5 seventeenths. A negative 11, I think of my number line, negative 11, and then a positive 11 and 5 seventeenths. Y is going to be a positive 5 seventeenths. So the solution to this system, x is 3 and 13 seventeenths. Y is 5 seventeenths. That's my ordered pair that's the solution to this system. So like I said, if we were graphing, it would be almost impossible to come up with those numbers off a graph. Not bad staying power there. So if we're going to, some other methods we want to look at for, for, uh, for solving these, depending on what textbook you use, the next method we look at is going to be called either elimination Or this textbook, I believe, actually calls it addition, the addition method. And what it's based off of is just solving an equation. If I have oh, x plus 7 equals 13, right? And I have another equation that says x equals 6. I, we've already talked about this a lot over the last two semesters. When I have an equation, I can add, subtract, multiply, divide the same thing 
on both sides and it won't change the equation. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to subtract 6 from this equation. Now I'm looking at that. If I subtract 6 from the 13, I get 7. Well, on the left side over here, I'm going to subtract 6 as well. But I know that x is equal to 6. So I'm still subtracting 6, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it in the form of x. x minus x cancels out, and I'm left with 7. Well, 7 equals 7 is true. So I can subtract or add the same thing to both sides of an equation, and it doesn't change it. But it doesn't have to be in the same form. Because x and 6 are equivalent, I can subtract x from one side, and I can subtract 6 from the other side. And it's still going to keep that equation true. So if I have something like x plus 2 equals... Got myself in a the corner there. x plus 2 equals 5, and... 3x plus 7 equals 16. I can take that second equation there, 3x plus 7 equals 16. And again, I can add the same thing to both sides of it. If I want to add 5 to this side, 16 plus 5 is 21. On the other side, I can also add 5, but instead of adding the, just the 5, I'm going to do this. 5 is equal to x plus 2. So what I'm going to add over here is x plus 2. So the 2 adds to the 7, making that a positive 9. The x adds to the 3x, making that a 4x. This equation should still be true, because what I added to each side was the same thing, even though it looks different x plus 2 and 5 are equivalent. Okay, now with that in mind, let's take a look at some systems of equations that are set up in a very special way. So we're going to take 2x minus 3y is going to be a negative 9. And... 5x plus 3y is going to be 30. Well, if I look at this system of equations here, if I take the top equation, it doesn't matter which one I take first, but I take that top equation, 2x minus 3y equals negative 9. And what I'm going to do is I am going to add to each side the bottom equation. So you know, this, the 30, is equivalent to 5x plus 3y. So what I'm going to do is on the left side, I am going to add the 5x plus 3y. On the other side, I'm going to add the 30. So on the left side here, I have 2x plus 5x makes 7x. But here's the trick. Here's what makes this work. Negative 3y and positive 3y cancel out. On the right side, negative 9 and positive 30 makes 21. So now we just have 7x equals 21. The y variable has disappeared. The y variable has been eliminated. That's why this is often called the elimination method. So now we can solve for x. We're just going to divide by 7 to get x by itself. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So x equals 3. So you can see getting to the solution of the first variable is a lot quicker using this method. But we do the extra work finding the second variable. When we did the substitution method, one of these equations would have already been solved for one of the variables. And this, now with elimination, it's not. So we know that x equals 3. We've got to go back to one of these two equations and put 3 in for x and solve for y. Because there's a negative in the top equation, actually there's a couple of negatives in the top equation, I'm going to use the bottom equation. So I'm dealing with all positive numbers. So 5x becomes 5 times 3 plus 3y equals 30. So 5 times 3 is, careful, 15. 
5 times 3 is 15, plus 3y equals 30. We're going to subtract. Now we're solving for y, so we will subtract the 15. 3y equals 30 minus 15 is 15. And then what? Divide by 3 to get y all by itself. So y equals 5. So x is 3, y is 5. So we get 3 comma 5 is our solution to that system of equations. So you can see basically what we did up here, well not basically, exactly what we did up here. We didn't even have to rewrite it over here to, to do this. All we had to do was make sure that these equations were lined up. We had the x variables, we had the y variables, we had the equal sign, then we had the constant numbers, the numbers with no variables, and then we just add down the columns. And the reason we're able to do that is because we are really adding the same thing to both sides of the equation. We're adding 30 to this side. Well, 5x plus 3y is equivalent to 30. We're adding that to the other side. Let's do another example similar to that. Oh, let's see, what do we have here? Negative 3x plus 5y will be 23. Um, 4x minus 5y. Uh, let's do this. A different variable disappear this time. We're going to do 3x plus 2y equals 97. That's going to be 5. 5. So again, the first thing we have to do is make sure these are lined up. We have all the x's here lined up. The y's are lined up here. There's our equal sign is lined up. And then the constants or the numbers without any variables are lined up there. So we're lined up. Now the second thing we have to make sure of, if I add these straight down the columns, is anything going to disappear? Yeah, the x will, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Negative 3x plus positive 3x is nothing. It cancels out. 5y plus 2y is 7y. On the other side, 23 plus 5 is 28. So now to get y, all we have to do is divide by 7. So y equals 4. Now I have to figure out x. I know that y equals 4. I have to go back up to one of these two original equations. Now again, I try to avoid working with negatives if I can, because negatives seem to make more mistakes. Um, I'm going to use this second equation here, because it's all positive. So 3x is going to be 3x plus 2y is going to become 2 times 4 equals 5. And now I can solve for x. Multiply the 2 times 4 is 8. Now I'm going to get x by itself by doing what's next. Subtracting 8. Very good. So 3x equals a negative 3, and then divide by 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is a negative 1, so x is negative 1. So the solution to this system of equations, x is negative 1 when y is 4. Now in both of these first two examples, they were set up so a variable automatically disappeared. Here we had negative 3x and positive 3x. When we added those together, we were going to get 0. In other words, they canceled out. This one here, I had negative 3y and positive 3y. Again, when I add them together, I get 0, or they cancel out. So these, these two systems were set up so that we had variables that automatically canceled out. 
That's not always going to be the case. We might have something like this. 5x minus 2y equals 19. 3x plus 4y equals 1. Looking at this, first of all, I need to make sure it's lined up. I have all my x's here. I have all my y's. There's my equal sign, and there's my constants. So it is lined up, so we're okay that way. Next, I need to check and see if I add down the columns here, is anything going to disappear? Well, let's see here. I would have, I would get 5x plus 3x is 8x. x isn't going to disappear. Negative 2y plus 4y is a positive 2y. The y doesn't disappear. 19 plus 1 is 20. Nothing disappears. I need one of those variables to disappear for this to work. So it doesn't work right now. So what I'm going to do is look back at each variable and the numbers it's being multiplied by. And I'm going to think in terms of, well, it's going to be least common multiples, but it's a lot like a least common denominator for fractions. So if I look at my x, x has 3 and 5 that multiply the x. What is that least common multiple or least common denominator for 3 and 5? It'd be 15. 15 would be the smallest number that both 3 and 5 can go into. So I could change the, the 5x into a 15x by multiplying it by 3. And I could change the 3x into a 15x by multiplying it by 5. Well, how about for the y's? We have a negative 2 and a positive 4. Well, we're going to ignore the negative. 2 and 4, what is the least common denominator for 2 and 4? 4. 8 would work, but they can. 4 is a little bit smaller. So what that means is this one doesn't even have to change. All I have to do is multiply this one to turn it into a 4. So I'm going to use that option. I'm going to turn the y coefficients, the numbers multiplying y, all into 4s. This one's already a 4. I don't have to do anything to that equation. The top equation here, I'm going to have to multiply. What do I have to do to change 2 into a 4? Multiply by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to write that solution down here. What is 2 times 5x? 10x. 2 times a negative 2y? Negative 4y. And then equals, and we do have to multiply the other side as well, 2 times 19 is 38. Now the bottom equation we said doesn't have to change. So we're going to keep that equation. 3x plus 4y equals 1. Now we're set up. We have a negative 4y and a positive 4y. If we add these equations, the y's are going to disappear. So 10x plus 3x is 13x, good. Negative 4y and positive 4y, cancel out, equals 38 plus, perfect, 38 plus 1 is 39. And then, of course, we have to divide by 13, good. So x equals 3. So now we have x equals 3. We have to take that back up to one of the original equations. I'm going to use the bottom one since that one's all positive. So 3 times x becomes 3 times 3 plus 4y equals 1. So now I do some combining here. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 4y equals 1. So now we have to solve for y. We're going to subtract 9. 4y equals 
1 minus 9 is a negative 8. We're going to divide by 4. y equals negative 2. So we've got y equals negative 2. Okay. That means, of course, 3, 2, or 3, negative 2 is our solution. Let's do another example similar to that. So I got 2x plus 3y equals 19. And we have 4x minus 2y equals 14. So looking at this one again, first thing we have to check is, is it lined up? And yes, we have the x's, we have the y's, we have the equal sign, and we have the constants. So we're all lined up. So we're good to start there. Second thing is if we add these two equations together, do any of the variables disappear? Well, we'd get 2x and 4x would be 6x. 3y and negative 2y would be positive 1y. They, neither one of them disappears. So we're going to have to adjust again. So once again, we're going to think in terms of least common denominators, least common multiples. For the x, we've got 2 and 4. The least common denominator there would be a 4. For the y's, we've got, we're going to ignore the negative for now. We've got 3 and 2. Least common denominator, least common multiple would be 6. Well, to, change, to do the 6 for the y's, we would have to change both the 3 and the 2. So I'm going to take the easier route, and I'm going to deal with the x's. To do the x's, we said 4 was the least common multiple. So this one can stay 4x. This is the one that we're going to have to change. What do we have to multiply this one by? 2. Exactly. And in fact, what I am going to do... So I'm actually going to multiply by not 2, but negative 2. Why am I multiplying by negative 2? So that's a negative 4, so the positive 4 and the negative 4 cancels. Exactly. So negative 2 times, I have to multiply every piece. So negative 2 times 2x, negative 4x, negative 2 times 3y, Negative 6y and negative 2 times 19. Negative 38. Our second equation does not change. So that's still 4x minus 2y equals 14. So now we're going to go ahead and add these equations. Negative 4x and positive 4x will cancel. Negative 6y and negative 2y make negative 8y. Negative 38 and positive 14 make negative 38 and positive 14 makes a negative 24. And now we solve that for y by dividing by negative 8. So y equals negative 24 divided by negative 8 is 3. So y is 3. So now we go back to one of our original equations knowing that y equals 3. Well again I try to avoid negatives so I'm going to use the top equation. So 2x plus 3y is going to be 3 times 3 equals 19. I replace the 3 times 3 with 9. And now I can solve that to get x. So I'm going to do what next? Subtract 9, yes. 
2x equals 10. And then divide by 2. So x equals 5. So x equals 5 when y equals 3, and that is my ordered pair. We might run into um, two y equals three x plus eleven and two x plus four y equals a negative 2. So what's the first thing we have to check for in these systems to, to do elimination or addition? Make sure they're lined up. This one is not. The second equation is x's, y's, equals, and then the constant. The first equation is not. I have to move this 3x over to the left side. So let's pull that one out and work with it here. So we've got 2y equals 3x plus 11. I need to move that 3x over to the other side. To do that, I'm going to subtract 3x. So over here, the 3x is gone. It's canceled out. I have 11 here. Now, normally, I would write this as 2y minus 3x, but I don't want it in that order. I want the three the x to be first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that's a negative 3x. I'm going to put that first. Then the positive 2y equals 11. So now I can bring that back over here. That's my top equation, remember. Negative 3x plus 2y equals 11. And my bottom equation is 2x plus 4y equals negative 2. So now they're lined up. We have them lined up. So then we need to figure out, is anything going to cancel out? Well, right now, negative 3x and positive 2x is negative 1x. That doesn't cancel. 2y and 4y is 6y. That does not cancel. So we're going to have to do some adjusting. Common denominators, 3 and 2 would be 6, perfect. How about for the 2 and 4 on the y? Just a 4, good. So that means I only have to change the, the 2y to a 4y. I, only, I don't have to change the other one. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to change the y's to a 4. Now when I multiply this top equation, I'm not going to multiply it by 2. What am I going to multiply it by? Negative 2. Very good. So that's going to become negative 2 times negative 3x is positive 6x. Negative 2 times 2y, negative 4y, equals, and negative 2 times 11, negative 22. That bottom equation does not change. Now, when we add the equations together, the one the y's will disappear. So 6x plus 2x is 8x. Negative 4y and positive 4y cancel out. Equals negative 22 and negative 2 make negative 24. Good. So now all we have to do is divide by 8 to get x by itself. Negative 24 divided by 8 is a negative 3. x is a negative 3. So now I go back to any of the original equations. And it really doesn't matter which one. I could, I could actually go back to, to one of these if I wanted to, or I could go all the way back to the beginning. I see this one up here. It's actually kind of easy to solve. So I'm going to look at it. 2y equals 3x plus 11. 
but I now know that x is negative 3. So 2y equals 3 times negative 3 plus 11. And now I figure out what y is. So the 2y doesn't change. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 plus 11. Negative 9 plus 11 is 2. So 2y equals 2. And the last thing we have to do is divide by 2. So y equals 1. Perfect. So that means we have x is negative 3 when y is 1. There's our ordered pair. Let's take a look at this one. Hey, now. Oh, yeah? Oh, is that Mr. Larson? Ah, tell him I said hi. He's the one you're stuck with for tonight, huh? Cool. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> okay, so we've got 3x plus 2y equals 8. And we have 2x minus 5y equals 18. So looking at this one, stick with me, guys. We only got about... 15 minutes left. Um, looking at this one, we are already lined up. We have the x's, we have the y's, we have equals, and we have the constants. So we're lined up. If we add them, none of the variables are going to disappear. So I need to take a look. Let's have you get off the floor there, guys. Thank you. So, we, we don't have any of the variables that are going to disappear, so we've got to look at our common multiples here. We've got 3 and 2. What's their least common multiple going to be? 6. 2 and 5? 10. So here it's really just as easy to either change the x's all into 6's or the y's all into 10's. I'm going to have to multiply both equations. Even though it's a slightly larger number, I'm actually going to change the y's into 10's. And the reason is, this one's already negative. Realistically, I could have done, just multiplied one of the other, the x's by a negative to make it negative 2. But it's the same amount of work either way, whether I change the x's or the y's here. So we're going to do the y's. So this top one, I'm changing the y into a 10. So what do I have to multiply 2y by? Negative 5. Well, just 5. Because this one's already negative down here. We're going to change this one into a 10. We have to multiply by 2. So this one's going to end up being a positive 10, and this one will be a negative 10, and that's what we want. We want one of them positive, one negative. So now on top here, 5 times 3x. 15x. 5 times 2y? 10y. Good. Equals 5 times 8? 40. 40. Good. On bottom here, 2 times x? 4x. 2 times a negative 5y? Negative 10y. Equals 2 times 18? 36. And now, if we add the equations, we can see the y's are going to cancel out. So 15x plus 4x is 19x. 10y plus negative 10y cancels out. Equals 
40 plus 36 is 76. So now we have to divide by 19 to get x by itself. x equals 4. Okay. Now that we know that x equals 4, we have to go back to one of the original equations to find y. Again, I try to look for ones that are all positive. So that's this top one up here. 3x plus 2y equals 8. But we know that x equals 4. So this becomes 3 times 4 plus 2y equals 8. Okay, so then we got, yes, 3 times 4 is 12. Perfect. Plus 2y equals 8. Then what? We're going to subtract 12. Good. So 2y equals negative 4. And then? Divide by 2. y equals negative 2. So x equals 4 and y equals negative 2. There's my ordered pair. That's my solution to that system. So let's have something like 5x plus 2y equals... 24, 3x plus, I don't want to do 3y, that's going to be, 3x plus 5y equals 41. So now looking at this one, is it lined up? Yes, it is. Is anything going to cancel out the way it is? No. So I'm going to look at, for the x's, 3 and 5, what would the least common multiple be? 15. For the y's, I have 2 and 5, the least common multiple would be 10. So realistically, both equations are going to have to be multiplied. It's going to be about the same amount of effort either way. So I'm going to let you guys pick. Which variable do we want to get rid of, x or y? Y. Y. Okay, we're going to get rid of y. So, we're going to turn them both into 10s. So, what do I have to multiply a 2 by to make it into a 10? That'll be 5, right? On the bottom, I have a 5 here. What do I have to multiply that by to make it into a 10? 2, right? Now, you said negative there, and I'm glad you said that because right now, this would be a positive 10y, and this would be a positive 10y. That's not going to cancel out. One of them has to be negative. And to, to figure out which one, we're just going to pick one. So I'm going to make the bottom one here a negative 2 that we're going to multiply by there. So on top, 5 times 5x makes 25x. Off the floor again. So that's 25x. 5 times 2y is 10y equals, this one's a little tougher, 5 times 24 is 120. Good. So now on the bottom equation here, negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. Good. Negative 2 times 5y is negative 10y and equals negative 2 times 41. Negative 82. So now when we go to add our equations, at 25x and negative 6 make 19x. 10y and negative 10y cancel out. 120, positive 120, negative 82 makes 38. Good. 
So then we have to divide by 19. Divide by 19. X equals 2. So now we have to figure out what Y equals. We go back up to the original equations. Now both of these are positive, so it really does not matter which one we use. So you guys pick, top or bottom. Top equation it is. So 5X plus 2Y equals 24. And we know that X equals 2. So we're going to replace X here with 2. So 5X is going to become 5 times 2 plus 2Y equals 24. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2Y is 24. Then what? Subtract 10. 2y equals 14. And then? We divide. Perfect. We divide by 2. y equals 7. So that means we have x equals 2, y equals 7, makes our ordered pair. That's our solution. There's a little bit of a varia variation of this. It looks something like this. Point three two x plus point six five y equals two hundred. Point seven four x minus point four one y equals one hundred and fifty. This type of equation here, and I know it looks ugly with the decimals in there. This type of equation comes up a lot in construction. Um, one of the areas I worked in for, for several years was engineering of the roof trusses. I'm sure you guys have seen those. Roof trusses, and I worked with floor trusses for a while as well. And when you're analyzing those roof trusses, the forces on the webs are described by an equation that looks, a system of equations, that looks like these. So it's not, I mean, if you're on a job site, on a construction site, yeah, probably not going to solve anything that looks like this. But if you're in an office designing these, this is not an uncommon system of equations to solve. In fact, I just put decimals here, but normally these decimals actually come from from trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent. Okay, so let's try to solve this equation. Now because of the nature of this equation with the decimals, it would be really difficult to look at this and try to decide what's the least common multiple of 0.32 and 0.74. And that's going to be tough to do. And the same with 0.65 and 0.41. Trying to find a least common multiple there is not going to work. So I am going to go the opposite route. I am going to pick one of my variables, x or y, excuse me, it doesn't matter which, and I'm just going to turn the coefficients into ones. Now because my y already has a negative one, I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to turn those coefficients into one. And rather than multiplying each piece of the equation, I am going to divide. This is 0.65y. If I divide by 0.65, that's going to turn that into a 1. So this equation down here, it's 0.4 or negative 0.41y. If I divide that by 0.41, it's going to turn that into a negative 1y. So there's going to be some rounding here. We're going to go to four decimal places. We're going to do the 0.32 divided by 0.65. It's 0.4923x. Well, the 0.65y divided by 0.65 is a positive 1y, or just plus y. Equals 
200 divided by 0. 0.65 gives us 307.69. On bottom, we're going to do the same thing. So the 0.74x divided by 0. 0.41, so 0. 0.74 divided by 0. 0.41. The four decimal places is 1.8049. X, the negative 0.41y divided by 0.41 is a negative 1y, or just a negative y, equals 150 divided by 0.41 is a, oops, try that again, 150 divided by 0.41 is 365.85. So now we have to add these equations. So here we've got 2.2972x. The y's disappear. Over here we've got 673.54. So now we find x by dividing by 2.2972. So x equals 673.54 divided by 2.2972. 293.20 is what we get. So then we go back up to one of those original equations. I'm just going to pick the top one, 0.32x. plus 0.65y equals 200. And I have to put the 293.2 in for x. So we go ahead and multiply the 0.32 times 293.2. to get 93.824. So 93.824 plus 0.65y equals 200. And then we'll subtract. Subtract the 93.824. So 0.65y equals 206.176. And we divide by the 0 0.65. And it looks like this example timed us out just perfect. We get y equals 206.176 divided by 0 0.65. That is 317.19 for y. So we get x is 293.20. And y is 317.19. That's our solution. And that is 255 for you guys. Um, so you guys have fun at your OSHA training. Say hi to Mr. Larson for me. We'll see you guys on Friday.